Hey guys, it's Ashley, and today I thought I should finally start talking about All the Right Places by Jennifer Niven. I loved this book, but it also was very emotional for me. If you watched my November wrap-up, you saw a little bit of that emotion start coming through, and so I've kind of been putting off doing this review, but I really want to review all, or at least most, of the books that I read for the rest of the year. I really want to do more review videos, so pardon me if this becomes a little bit emotional, but I think that's good when books give us emotions and these deep feelings and thoughts about things. I think that's why we're readers, is because we get to explore those feelings and those ideas and those things about ourselves that we don't necessarily know how to put into words, but authors do, and I think that's the magic of reading. So All the Bright Places is Jennifer Niven's very first YA novel. It is not her first novel, just her first YA novel. She's written other adult books um, that I'm gonna have to get a hold of because now I love her writing and want to see what the rest of it's like. But this is her first venture into YA fiction and she did a fantastic job. For those of you who are not aware, this is a story about Violet and Finch. Violet and Finch meet one day their senior year of high school on the ledge of a six-story tall bell tower. They're both up there contemplating life and death and suicide and they kind of rescue each other in this really beautiful way. And this begins just an unlikely friendship relationship complex thing. Finch is labeled at school as the freak. He's just weird, he goes missing for long periods of time, he has anger management problems, he's just the freak. Violet, on the other hand, is part of the in crowd. She's a former cheerleader and she's one of the popular kids and always has been. However, since her sister's death, she's been dealing with a lot of deep emotional issues, a lot of survivor guilt, and just very deep depression that she doesn't see a way out of. And so because of their interaction on that ledge, they now start weaving together their similarities and their differences as they work together on a school project. And so this book becomes part coming of age, finding yourself story, and part road trip story because their assignment is to go throughout the state and find little known treasures of the state and it's just really fun in those moments when they're just being Finch and Violet and going along and they have their rules of wandering and they're just having fun while they're both dealing with these big heavy issues. And so I think that's all the plot I want to give you without bringing any spoilers into it. As a story, it was just beautifully done. I loved her writing style. It was just very real and relatable and I didn't feel like it was forced or fake. I felt like it was something very real. I think this would be a good time to mention my one issue with the book. This is the only reason it gets four and a half stars instead of five full stars, is because of the use, this is a petty reason, I, I acknowledge that, because of the use of an electricity shot up my arm and I felt a spark when he touched my hand. I, I, I know a lot of us share this sort of animosity towards that phrase. Usually it doesn't bother me too much, however in this book she used it a lot and that kind of got on my nerves, but honestly that was my one issue with this entire book. I mean, I put it as five stars in Goodreads because it's not enough of an issue to take off a full star. But I really, 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 really loved this book. I just thought it was so beautiful. I loved seeing these two totally different people come together with this mutual pain and brokenness and trying to heal each other, but then in the end seeing them kind of fracture because of who they are as people and because of the support systems they have and because of the resources that they have available, I, I found it to be a very realistic way for the book to go. I mentioned in my wrap-up video that I started this book one night because I needed something light and happy and this was the wrong book for that, but it ended up being a very good book and I'm so glad I read it. And then I read it the next morning before I had to go to work. All day long I was wondering what was happening in the book. I needed to know what was going on. I needed to make sure that Finch was okay. Violet was starting to get her act together, but Finch had me really worried. He was showing some symptoms that was just very concerning to me and I needed to get home and find out what happened. So I got home and I finished the book that night. I think in 24 hours I was done with the book. But I related to it a lot in a couple of different ways. First, with Violet. Violet had had this horrible thing happen in her life and she was having trouble moving past it. And I could relate to that because when I was about that same age, my little sister was diagnosed with a brain tumor. So all of a sudden, death became like a real thing in life. She didn't die. My sister is very much alive, cancer free. Now, what are we, 12 years later? Praise God. But all of a sudden, like, it became a possibility. It wasn't just something that happened to other people. It became something that was a strong possibility in 
my family and I was terrified and it could have gone the other way and who's to say that I wouldn't have ended up like Violet if it had happened but it was just a very big changing moment and it's something that weighs on you heavily and so I related to Violet in that sense of like how do you then pick up the pieces and keep going but I also not that I related to Finch but I've had a Finch in my own life and so I related in that way and I think that's why I was so worried about this Finch a lot of the things that he was doing in the book were very similar to the things that my Finch would do in real life there was a lot of over Overlap. Finch would do things differently than my Finch would, but it was all coming from that same manic feeling. I was recognizing that and remembering all of that pain and turmoil that I went through with him in high school. She's not really in my life as much as before. We're just Facebook friends at this point and every once in a while we message or something, but I still worry about him. So, hey, if you're watching this, I still love you and I still worry about you. You probably know that, but that's never going to change. We never had a romantic relationship like Violet and Finch do in the book, but we had a very close friendship and I've been there with him through a lot of different things and through a lot of what Finch calls the awake and the asleep times. And so I related a whole lot to that and I was very worried for Finch the whole time. And I think that's the great thing about literature is that it evokes these feelings and these memories and these relatable moments in our lives and allows us to relate to characters on a page that don't actually exist in real life. In the book, Violet didn't get to see a whole lot of Finch's bad moments. We as the reader got to see it or got to see hints of it, but Violet never actually saw it until towards the end. But for me personally, I've been there for the bad moments for my Finch. And I'm sure a lot of you have been there. Either you were the Finch or you were the person watching it happen. Or maybe you were the Violet and Finch hid it from you for so long. I think a lot of us, especially in this day and age, can relate so much to this story and to the pain that's in the book. But ultimately, I left this book that was totally about suicide and depression and mental illness feeling hopeful, which doesn't seem like it should go together and it doesn't seem like it should fit how this book ended. But I think Jennifer Niven did such a good job with the writing of this book and with the way she ended it and also with the title, All the Bright Places, that you can't help but feel totally broken at the end of the book, but also like the pieces are starting to fit back together. And that I think is the best thing because because we've all read those books where you're just like, oh my gosh, this book just destroyed me. This book broke me to pieces. But with All the Bright Places, it did that, but it also started putting me back together and left me feeling very hopeful, which I think is something that we need. There's a lot of talk today in the world about mental illness and depression and suicide, and it can feel very overwhelming because those are really big issues, but there is hope in the world too. There are places to get help. There are places to find somebody who will listen and who will help put you back together. And that doesn't have to be like a romantic thing like Finch and Violet. It can be just as simple as somebody listening and taking time to say, I'm here for you. And I think that's what we need to be talking about more. We need to say, hey, I'm here for you. Please don't keep it to yourself. I think we need to take that opportunity and say, hey, you know what? You're going through some crap. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to love you through this. We're going to find help. We're going to do what it takes to find all those bright places. And if you're one of the people who is struggling like Finch was, like Violet was in the beginning, please know that there are so many people out there who love you, so many people out there who want to help you. Please do not suffer with these things by yourself. Please don't lock yourself in the closet and sleep in there because the rest of the world is too big and open. Find somebody who's going to get in there with you and pull you out of it, whether it's a professional or a friend or somebody. Please do not suffer alone. This video is really hard to make because it's such a big issue and it does feel overwhelming at times, especially when you're by yourself and alone. We need to have discussions about these things. We need to read books like this and know that it's not just fiction, that there are finches and violets all over the world. And we need to find all the bright places before it's too late because they do exist. So I challenge you to make yourself available to the people in your life. Make yourself available as the one who will help them through those dark nights into all the bright places. If you're watching this video and we know each other in real life, please consider this my statement that I love you and I am willing to be there for you. That's my commitment to the people in my life. I've been a youth minister. I still am a children's minister. And I tell my kids and my teens, if you need anything, seriously, pick up the phone. I will answer. I will come. I will do whatever I need to do to make sure you are safe. I'm not really sure where to go with the rest of this video. This was supposed to be a book review, and it was at the beginning, and then it kind of grew into something else. But if you haven't read All the Bright Places, I highly, highly recommend it. It is just a beautiful book that will break you, but it will start to put you together again as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you think about the book, about this issue in general of suicide 
suicide and depression and mental illness. So I just want you to know that there is a God out there who cares about you and there are people around you who will love you and help you find all those bright places. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you later.